That was a very nice introduction. I appreciate it very much. Uh, it's uh, so much fun and so interesting. And I know the governor just made a very big statement that was appreciated by many, and that was amazing, actually. And he's a respected man, and when he speaks, people listen. So I thought that uh, it just came out over the news, his feelings about one of the other candidates. That's strong feelings. So uh, that will be uh, very interesting. I guess you agree, too. I agree. I agree. And, you know, he's been mixed on the subject. He goes wherever the votes are. So he all of a sudden went over here, and then all of a sudden he got slapped. So it's very interesting to see. You know, I sat back and I actually uh, wrote a few things down concerning uh, ethanol, biofuel, and, and I wanted to just uh, read what I wrote because I think it's very important from the standpoint, certainly, of this room. This is a little bit different. I'm going in a little while to do an introduction of a person who's so highly regarded and, and a tremendous person where we're getting an endorsement, and that'll be exciting. So it's been an exciting. And I just left the John Wayne Museum where were we endorsed by the family and the daughter, who is such an amazing woman. And uh, so John Wayne has endorsed Trump. I like that. That's what we need. <laughs> we need a little more John Wayne around here in this world, I will tell you, certainly in our country. Maybe the rest of the world has a lot of John Wayne. We don't have it. So that's very important. But I wrote this out, and I, I thought I'd just read a little bit of it to you. And I think you'll agree with me, and if you don't, you'll let me know. That's one thing I know about you people. You're going to let me know. The RFS, which is Renewable Fuel Standard, is an important tool in the mission to achieve energy independence for the United States. I will do all that is in my power as president to achieve that goal. So far, you agree with me, right? As president, I will encourage Congress to be cautious in attempting to charge and change any part of the RFS. I mean, we have to do that. Any part of the RFS. Energy independence is a requirement of America is to become great again. My theme is make America great again. It's an important part of it. The EPA should ensure that biofuel RVOs or blend levels match the statutory level set by Congress under the RFS. The RFS and the associated RVOs, which is very important, or blend levels, past the current 2022 cutoff, must be part of a comprehensive energy program that benefits all Americans and ensures, again, that we are energy independent. As President, I would encourage regulators to end restrictions that keep higher blends of ethanol and biofuel from being sold. So we are with you, folks, and we've been with you from day one. And I was over here about four weeks ago, and I actually toured some of the plants. I met a lot of the employees. It's amazing what's uh, going on with uh, ethanol, with biofuel, with the different elements. It's a different world, and we're going to remain energy independent. We're going to be energy independent. We could have been there a long time ago if we would have been allowed to be there. But it's very important, and you do a fantastic service. I know not everybody's there, but I am there with you 100 percent. So uh, that's the story. And uh, congratulations. <laughs> we are uh, in a very interesting period of time. It's, uh, it's vicious. It's vicious. Not since medieval times have you read about heads being chopped off, people being murdered and killed to the extent that they're being murdered and killed now. Uh, when I would go and read and study history, I always loved history for some reason. And you'd read about medieval times. This is medieval times. We're in medieval times. In terms of the world and what's going on, you go to the Middle East and you look at Christians where their heads are chopped off because they're Christian. You look at others, same thing. I mean, they're drowning people in cages. There's never been a time like this. And I was against the war in Iraq. I felt it was going to destabilize the Middle East. There's been tremendous coverage of that. My, my, the fact that I was very strongly opposed to it, I just felt it would be totally a mess. And it's turned out to be a bigger mess than anybody could have ever believed. And what's happened, and what's happened very strongly, is that we went into uh, the war. We totally decapitated one of the two powers in terms of military might. 
And I said, the other one will take over, and that's exactly what's happened. Uh, Iran is taking over Iraq. The Iran deal is one of the worst deals I've ever seen negotiated ever, ever, ever of any kind, whether it's countries or whether it's uh, deals or whether it's just a simple contract. One of the most incompetently negotiated deals. All we had to do is increase the sanctions. We would have gotten the prisoners back three years ago. We would have had everything we wanted. We would have made a much better deal. We wouldn't have given them $150 billion. I mean, to think of what happened. And then on top of it, right before the deal, they take our seven sailors, they make them drop to the begging position, hands up, guns to their heads, and embarrass us and humiliate us as a country. And it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And frankly, if we weren't giving them, I mean, these are great negotiators. The Persians have always been great negotiators. If we weren't giving them that money the following day or two days, they would have never given us those sailors back because they have no respect for our country. They have no respect for our leadership. They have no respect for us. They have no respect for anything having to do with the United States. They will respect us again. Believe me. Believe me. So I saw what happened, and I watched, and I've been watching what's been going on with the country and uh, how sad it is, actually, if you look at so many different things. We're losing with the military. Our military is being decimated with cuts and and problems and not having proper leadership. We can't beat ISIS. You know, there was a time we could beat Germany, we could beat Japan, we could beat whoever was in front of us, but now we can't beat ISIS, which is a group probably of 30,000 people, and they're dispersed in a certain way. That shouldn't bother. I think General Patton would have figured it out. Do you agree very quickly? I think General Douglas MacArthur would have figured that out very, very rapidly, very, very quickly. So we will get that figured out, and we will knock the hell out of them, because we can't. You know, while I didn't want to go in, the way we got out was wrong. We got out, and we announced a date. And the enemy sat back and waited. They probably couldn't believe that we were announcing a date. But we announced a date, and after that date was announced, the enemy pulls back. They waited. We got out, and they've, look what's happened now. Look what's happened now. Then you have the migration, where we want to take in thousands and thousands and thousands of people. I think far greater than any numbers that you're hearing, frankly. And we have no idea who these people are. So we want to have strong borders. We want to have strong lines. You know, this all started. One of the reasons I'm doing so well in the polls, and I think I'm doing really well in Iowa. I think it's really, really been strong in Iowa. I think even stronger than the polls say. Uh, and the polls have us pretty much in first place, or at a minimum tied for first place. CNN had a poll recently, 33 to 20, with me being the 33, which is nice. but. <laughs> But uh, I think we're doing really well here. I hope to do really well here. We're doing great with the evangelicals. We're doing great with the Tea Party. And we're doing great. I mean, I've been, I've been in Iowa so much, and I'm going to be spending a lot of time uh, here over the next uh, week and a half. And who would think it's coming up so soon, February 1st? It's going to be a very exciting period of time politically. Then we go on to New Hampshire. We go on to South Carolina and Nevada and the SEC. It's, the whole thing is going to be very exciting. And Although I will tell you, it's only going to be exciting by a win. If I don't win, I just wasted one hell of a lot of time. But if I don't win, I'm not going to be so excited. I guess you're right. I'll be the opposite of excited. But one of the things I'm doing is, and I think it's a big advantage in terms of people and popularity, I'm self-funding my campaign. I'm not asking all of you biofuel people and you ethanol people. I'm not saying, please, can I have money? Can I have money? I don't want anything. I do what's right. So when I want to go with ethanol, I can go with ethanol. It's a big difference. Don't forget, other candidates are supported by the oil industry. They're supported by people totally in the oil industry. And uh, they, they have them totally wrapped up. And me, I'm going to do what's right for the country. I'm going to do what's right. Nobody's going to come to me and say, Donald, I gave you $5 million, and I hope you're going to remember that, and I hope you're going to do something that maybe it's not so good for the country, but it's good for him or her. And it's not going to happen that way. We're going to do what's right. So I'm self-funding my campaign. I'm not taking contributions. I, I tell you what, I would have had the biggest, the biggest super PAC you have ever seen with the money I've turned down where I tell people I don't want it, I don't want it, I can't do it. And I'm turning down friends. I wouldn't even do anything for them. I'm going to do what's right anyway. I was actually with a group in Iowa about two months ago, big group, probably 4,000 people. And I said, listen, I feel so Foolish, not taking all this money that's being, you know, when you're number one, I was, I've been number one practically from the time I announced. 
and June 16th, big day. That's when I talked about illegal immigration. Man, did I get hit. I talked about that, and then people found out, hey, he's right. And we've been right about a lot of things. We've been right about a lot of things. We've been right about the military. We've been right about terminating Obamacare and coming up with a much better solution and a lot less expense for the people. But we've been right. And I will tell you that from the time I announced, uh, it was — it has been a, a fabulous experience. And when I was talking to these 4,000 people, and they were great people, I said, look, let me take the money. We, I did my a poll much more accurately than those guys can do polls. I mean, I did the greatest poll, 4,000 people from Iowa. I said, let me take the money. I feel so foolish not taking it. It's millions of dollars, millions. I would have made Jeb Bush's to 125 men. Can you imagine? He spent 125. He's got 125. He spent like 70 or 78 or 80. And he's like doing terribly. I'm in first place. I haven't spent anything practically. Now I'm going to spend two reasons. Number one, I feel guilty. Number two, I don't want to take a chance. Does that make sense? So I said to this group, 4,000 people, I said, so everybody, ready? Can I take the money? I promise it won't have any influence. They all stood up and they booed. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, no, because they're smart. Because they're smart. And then I said, who in the room says it's okay? for me to take the money. And there was one person in the very back of the room, actually looked like a very sleazy character, stood up and said, you could take. So I was amazed, actually. And, and you know, my people told me that would make, I've actually had some people that if you're rich, that you can do that, that would be an amazing thing because it would be a big advantage. I never knew it was going to be that big of an advantage, but a lot of people respect the fact that I'm self-funding my campaign because they know I'm going to do what's right. I often tell the story of Ford moving into Mexico. And they won't do that. I mean, there's so many people representing Ford that some politician that relies on money coming in, Nabisco moving into Mexico, their big plant from Chicago. There's so many people representing companies like Nabisco and Ford that, believe me, they have a tremendous power over the politicians. They're like puppets, just like puppets. So I'm going to do it a way that hasn't been done before, maybe, or maybe certainly hasn't. I mean, on either side, everybody is taking money from all these different groups, whether it's the oil people or whether it's uh, any people that you talk about, the retailers. Every group is well covered. And every one of these people is not going to necessarily do the right thing for the people, for the country, for the United States. They're going to do the right thing for the company they represent or the company they own a piece of or own in its entirety. So you're going to get a, very, a really fair shake from me. And, you know, I just, I just tell you very strongly, that's the way it is. Uh, one of the things we're going to do, I know the greatest business people in the world. They come from New York. Carl Icahn is backing me 100 percent, endorsing me. He's already endorsed me. But many of the other business people, they want to. Nobody knows who they are. That's one of the problems. I mean, it's like, oh, I want to endorse you. I say, nobody knows who you are, but I know who they are. They're killers. But this is what we want negotiating for us. We want these great negotiators, these great people, Negotiate. We're losing 400 and, I mean, so ridiculous. It's actually much more. It's actually now, I believe, hit over $500 billion in a trade deficit with China. $500 billion. We can't lose that money. We're losing tremendous amounts of money with Japan. We're losing tremendous amounts with, with Mexico, where we're going to create a very strong border. And we are going to build a wall. And by the way, Mexico is going to pay for the wall, just in case you had any questions. And the reason they're going to pay for the wall is very simple. They make a fortune. They make so much money, Mexico, on trade deficits with us. They make so much money, the wall is peanuts. The politicians come up to me and they say, you can't build a wall, can you? Of course you can. The Great Wall of China was built 2,000 years ago, 13,000 miles. Here we need 1,000 miles because we have natural barriers. We need 1,000 miles, which is nothing. It's nothing. And the cost is nothing compared to what we're losing. People are pouring through. And I want people to come into the country but I want them to come in legally. They have to come into the country legally. So I know this is a very specific group, and I don't want to keep you very long, and we're going to have some interesting things to say today at another meeting. But this was an important meeting, and I wanted to let you know how I feel. And I've been that way for a long time, and your representatives have been great. Because when I was here four weeks ago, I mean, they took me into plants. I said, enough already. Okay, you've convinced me. I don't want to see any more plants. I don't need to see any more. I believe me. But I think it's great. Actually, it's amazing and, and incredible what you do and how you can do this. And the whole process of the plants and the creation of this fuel is, is fabulous. So 
Uh, I'm with you 100 percent. I wish you a lot of luck, and uh, I will come down, and I think we're going to say hello to some of the people in the early rows. And it's a great honor, a great honor, and good luck. And get out there and make plenty of fuel, because we're going to need it. Eventually, we're going to really need it. Thank you very much.